Welcome to Rutgers Around the World, a special six-episode series celebrating the university's international history and its connection with the global community. We bring you this program as part of our 250th anniversary celebration. Hi, I'm Bruno Ferreira. And I'm Gabriela Mullion. Rutgers maintains these relationships through its Gaia Centers. Gaia stands for Global Advancement and International Affairs. In this episode, we'll focus on Rutgers' relationships in Europe and in the Middle East, and how these relationships translate into opportunities for all members of our university community. Let's start with a bigger picture of Rutgers' ties on the continent of Europe. Some of these relationships are as old as the university itself. Rutgers has close ties with Europe that can be traced as far back as the university's founding, from the days when the U.S. was still colonized by Great Britain. Rutgers has a very strong historical relationship with countries in Europe, starting with Utrecht University 250 years ago. In fact, Rutgers derived its seal and motto from the University of Utrecht in the Netherlands, and that relationship continues to thrive. We do have a fairly long-standing uh, memorandum of agreement in three different areas, in linguistics, women and gender studies, and art history. We have put together an exchange of scholars and students so the honors students here at uh, New Brunswick will be able to travel and study and work in Utrecht, and some of their students and faculty will be able to come here. At Rutgers, the Center for European Studies serves as a focal point for students and faculty interested in Europe. What we're trying to do is to reach out throughout the university community to all faculty whose scholarship touches on Europe. Many of these faculty are engaged in cutting-edge research on the continent. In Hungary, we've been able to access people who have these rare genes that not only do they cause Parkinson's, uh, but they cause Parkinson's in their 20s. And that allows us to study these people throughout the course of their disease. We actually uh, generate a transgenic tomato that are uh, able to produce uh, antivirals uh, for certain human viruses. At the Max Planck Institute in Molecular Plant Physiology in Germany. One of my colleagues, uh, Professor Osa Rennermalm, um, is one of the world's leading uh, experts on the melting of the Greenland ice cap. This research offers an in-depth and multidisciplinary look at issues affecting Europe, like the migration crisis. Greece has to me now become a kind of battleground. They're being squeezed economically, and at the same time, there's uh, there are migrants arriving every day. So I just decided that was the book I needed to write now. The Learning Abroad program to Germany is uh, in urban studies. I take students to explore the urban environments of three cities. The gist of the course is really to look at urban change in Germany and housing. And faculty research often leads to formal partnerships between Rutgers and educational institutions in Europe. We have outstanding uh, collaborations in Spain. We also have important collaborations in Ireland with the University of Limerick and also in other European countries. One of the long-standing partnerships is uh, the, with the University of Graz in Austria. Another example, the School of Nursing here in Camden partnering with Semmelweis University in Hungary. But there was a call for international collaborations through the Erasmus Plus program, which is a program that's funded by the European Commission on Higher Education. So. Some of us applied, Rutgers was the partner, and they were granted it and were just ready to begin mobility. Uh, there are a number of uh, partnerships existing uh, between the law school and other organizations abroad, one of them being uh, a partnership with a university in the Netherlands, which is about you know, sending to uh, the Netherlands students interested in international public law. Rutgers students can learn about Europe through a global curriculum and dozens of study abroad opportunities, the most of any region in the world. We have programs such as our microbiology and culture of cheese and wine in France. It is an opportunity for students to see how the science really influences culture. Well, the Glee Club goes on an overseas tour every fourth year. In the past, we've gone throughout Northern Europe. We make it a point to tour so that the students will have that experience of a professional concert tour overseas. We have a tremendous range of learning abroad programs. Every couple of years, I give a course in 20th century Irish literature. So we read a lot of 20th century literature, a real cross-section. And, um, and we spend about eight weeks in class here and then 10 days in Ireland in May. The Rutgers University Archaeological Field School in Italy does archaeological work 
in Central Italy and we teach students all aspects of archaeological research. The program to Iceland, it's a program where you will be living, breathing, eating, making art in conversation 24-7. The sense of community is really at the forefront of the experience. Working with my colleagues in the Honors Program and the Honors College, I've designed a nine or 10 day global field experience to Poland. The goal is for students to understand the complexities of contemporary Polish life due to a very long and brutal 20th century in which Poland was occupied by Germans and Soviets. We live in an extremely global world, and the more experience students have with regions outside of the U.S., the better prepared they're going to be to be in the work world. As you just heard, one of Rutgers' exciting new relationships is with Semmelweis University. That's right, Bruno. And for more on this partnership, I recently spoke with Dr. Marcel Popp, Director of International Relations at Semmelweis University in Budapest, Hungary. Here's what he had to say. Dr. Popp, thank you so much for joining us today. The pleasure is mine. So I wanted to start with, what are some examples of academic areas where Semmelweis and Rutgers collaborate? Uh, first of all, uh, please let me point out uh, the long-standing cooperation between Summerbest University and Rutgers University in education and research. Uh, looking back in the publications database back to about 1984, nearly 100 papers can be identified in which researchers from Rutgers University and Summerbest University published together in areas such as pediatrics, cardiovascular disorders, neurology, uh, psychiatry or brain research, just to mention a few of them. During the past five years, the cooperation between the two universities was strengthened and during the mutual, mutual visits, a matching table was created, which provides a summary uh, for the potential uh, areas of collaboration. Out of this, I would like to point out uh, interprofessional education, clinical research, neuroscience, autopsy options in Hungary and uh, pharma epidemiology besides the classical students and staff uh, exchange. For the successful collaboration, it was necessary, of course, from both institutions to identify their own strengths, needs and capacity. Currently, our most important program is realizing the framework of, uh, of the Erasmus Mobility Program, which provides uh, medical students and nursing students and the uh, faculty, of course, with the opportunity to spend even uh, a semester in the part of the institution on the basis uh, of reciprocity. So building, uh, so building yeah. off of that, Dr. Pop, um, how important is global exchange between students and faculty, and where do you see Rutgers and Semmelweis going in the future? Uh, these days, one of the most important direction for development in the life of uh, higher education institution is the internationalization process. Due to demographic uh, changes, migration, globalization, there is a strong need for changes uh, within the healthcare and medical higher education. Uh, that's why we, as higher education institution, we should be able to train specialists uh, who meet these needs and who have such global and intercultural competency. And the partnership with American institutions have an especially important role in the development of some of us university international relations. Among these, Rutgers University is one of the strategic partners. Uh, and besides the classical and faculty mobility programs, there should be an emphasis on, on the launching of special research collaboration in the future. Uh, as far as the development of international relations is concerned, I truly believe that it is not possible to do so without the development of personal relationships. I hope that with the help of our researchers, students and faculty, several strong and meaningful personal relationships will come into reality, similarly to my good personal relationship with Professor Mario Tull, since this contributed to the fruitful cooperation between Semmelweis University and Rutgers, uh, Rutgers University. Very well said, Dr. Pop. Thank you so much. The pleasure was mine. Thank you. Semmelweis University is the oldest medical school in Hungary. It was founded in 1769. You know, it's partnerships like those in Europe that make it possible for students to study abroad. Gabriela, didn't you study abroad? I did. I went to Peru, where I got to learn a lot about the Peruvian culture and even a lot about myself. Here's a story about another Rutgers student who studied abroad and learned some surprising things in France. Few outside the mathematics community know that Paris, France is a world-class center for mathematics research. 
The Rutgers Mathematics Department has fostered a long-standing two-way exchange of research visitors and collaborations with the math departments of Paris. I've been going to Paris since essentially the time I finished my PhD for so 30 years. It's a really exciting place, not only because there are so many wonderful mathematicians from Paris in Paris, but people come in from all over the world. I've been one month in the summers for many of these years and also periodically have gone to meetings. I have been certainly a very frequent visitor to France. Uh, I've spent maybe uh, over two years of sabbaticals at the Institut Autotivier Scientifique. American and French system are different, but uh, as far as the mathematics goes, it's exactly the same, whether it is in uh, Rutgers, in New Jersey, or in Paris, France, and so there's no problem about collaboration. Paris is such a center for research that everyone passes through. So I've often been in Paris at the same time as other mathematicians from Rutgers. This is not at all uncommon. Paris is really a center, a world center for mathematics, and it has been for a longer time than any other city that can call itself a world center. Rutgers benefits from is its situation right down the road from Princeton and Courant, and not far from Penn. So, you know, this particular part of the Northeast, with Rutgers is really sort of right in the center of it, is like the best approximation to Paris anywhere in the U.S., and that's a wonderful thing about Rutgers. We're joined by Giorgio Damaro, director of the Center for Global Education at the Rutgers Gaia Centers, and Ginny Kianka McLaughlin, a Rutgers alum and member of the original Rutgers Junior Year Study Abroad Program. Welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Giorgio, what is the Study Abroad Program? Uh, study Abroad is a venerable tradition here at Rutgers. Uh, the Study Abroad Program has been going strong for 50 now of Rutgers 250 years. Uh, for much of that time, uh, it was the traditional junior year abroad. Um, in which students would enroll at one of our partner universities abroad and take courses with the local students, um, often in the language of the country. Uh, that still remains very much the core of what we do, uh, but we have broadened it out now to include uh, over 30 uh, faculty-led uh, short-term programs uh, that take place in the summer, in the winter, and even during the spring break. So Ginny, you are a part of this Junior Abroad Program, and you went to France in 1967. Could you tell us about that experience? Absolutely. It was an amazing coincidence, um, a good one for me, that I was a junior at um, Douglas majoring in French the year that Rutgers had the Junior Year Abroad Program in France. Um, we actually didn't fly to France. We sailed from New York on the SS France on my 20th birthday. So what was that like? Another coincidence. It was um, certainly an ex um, expansion of the mind in many ways. We, to be in the country where I had been learning and studying for years before um, and to actually see these places and experience the culture firsthand was quite, quite mind expanding. How did that impact your life and your career later on? My career from that point on actually um, was largely spent overseas, partly because speaking French, but also because of my interest in, in living and working abroad and being willing to travel. And I still travel quite a bit, even though I'm now retired. So. And Georgia, what's study abroad like now? Well, it's very gratifying to hear about uh, someone's experience from, uh, from that first uh, time abroad uh, for Rutgers. Um, it seems to me that that is exactly what we hope will happen when students go abroad, which is uh, really to kind of broaden your horizons, um, uh, be able to kind of question your assumptions, um, gain independence. Um, and uh, that's very much what we hope all our students get out of it. Um, and that's open to all majors, correct? It is very much so now open to all majors, um, you know, and recognizing the fact that um, uh, it isn't maybe necessarily possible for all students to go abroad for a full academic year anymore, or even for a semester. You know, we have, again, broadened things out so that we have now programs during the summer, during the winter, many of them faculty-led. Um, and so, for instance, staying on France, uh, in addition to the traditional semester uh, abroad, which now takes place mainly in Paris, um, we have four uh, summer programs uh, and one in the winter. 
Um, some of those are indeed uh, language programs, an uh, art history program, but we now also offer uh, programs in the sciences. So for instance, uh, a wonderful program on the microbiology of cheese and wine that takes place in the south of France, um, as well as one on, in food science and agriculture. Um, uh, and so it, it is indeed possible for students of all majors to go abroad. And um, uh, it, I would hope that students realize that, it, you know, that, that it's not inaccessible for them, either uh, financially or academically. And Ginny, what would you say to students thinking about study abroad? Go for it. it was, it's an experience that will not come again. At, it, having it at that point in your life, it's the perfect time to jump in with both feet. I think the key thing that Giorgio just mentioned was it builds your independence. It mm -hmm. builds your self-confidence. And I like to think of it as almost like being a freshman again, but with the added aspect of being in the new place, new ways of doing things, maybe a different language, mm -hmm. um, all these things. But once you've been through that and done it successfully, you're much more self-confident to go ahead into the outside world. Of course. Well, as someone who did study abroad, I can definitely appreciate and relate to everything you, you both said today. So thank you again for joining us. Thanks very thank much. You. From France, let's cross the channel to the home of the bard himself, William Shakespeare. No other schools have a year-long conservatory program. It blows people's mind. Like, when they hear about it, they're like, you stayed there for a year? You did what? This is Rutgers Conservatory at Shakespeare's Globe, our training program for the BFA actor. I am good friends with a chunk of people who go to the top conservatories. And I can tell you they're very envious of the experience that I've been able to have because there's no other conservatory in America that I know of that gets to go to the Globe for a year like we do. I think it's a big deal for a lot of them just to leave their parents to come to New Jersey to go to school. Two years later, they're leaving the country to live somewhere for a year, and I, I think it really broadens them. If we're going to give our students classical training, let's let them be in the, in the heart of it. Let them be in London. Let them be based at Shakespeare's Globe, which is the heart of, of Shakespeare. So our students are actually part of a working theater that is also a school. What the Globe added for me was a real uh, a sense of discipline, which was something I really needed to work on. You know, things like memorizing your lines. It's a chance to become a young professional because at the Globe they are treated as young professionals. There's a huge change when they come back. I don't know if they've actually physically changed or grew three inches. They just look different to me. They're more grounded, they're more mature. They have tremendous confidence. When you come back here, you feel really, uh, really grounded, ready to work. Very much like I have something to offer now. That's what I feel like. And before, I felt like, like I didn't or sort of on my back foot. I, I'd say to my students, nobody sent me over to the Globe for a year when I was training. I think they have better training than I did. Uh, so for them to have better training than their teachers is a pretty big deal. Bruno, I understand you have a connection to Shakespeare. I do. I recently performed in the Rutgers Newark production of Hamlet. I played Guildenster. Do you want to be an actor when you graduate? Yeah, well, I mean, I'm playing a TV anchor right now, and uh, <laughs> who knows what could happen after this. But before we get on about my future, let's take a look at a group of Rutgers students digging into our past. The Rutgers University Archaeological Field School in Italy essentially does uh, the research work of a project called the Upper Sabina Tiberina Project. That project's goal is to study Roman habitation in a large area about 40 miles north of Rome. That's really been kind of understudied. We usually take 20 to 30 students during the summer session, and we live nearby at a rustic hotel called an Agriturismo. We are trying to find various places that we know the Romans lived at there, especially uh, villas. Uh, Roman villas are essentially like the plantations of the ancient world. The field school essentially excavates at one site, a villa that operated from about 100 BC to about AD 100 that was in the village of Vacone. It's a town of about 200 people. The students are excavating all aspects of the villa, so we have beautiful rooms with luxurious appointments, mosaic floors, painted walls, and uh, there are productive areas where people were working in the villa probably mostly slaves. So we've found olive presses and grape presses for making oil and wine. And actually, as we've discovered, this is one of the larger operations that's ever been discovered in central Italy. I'd say a typical day, people have a short breakfast. We walk to the site uh, from the Agriturismo, which is about a mile away. 
uh, and we're there working at 7 a.m. We dig with bigger tools, pickaxes, shovels, wheelbarrows. And as we get down and get into uh, layers that are more archaeologically rich, that are undisturbed by you know, previous activity, then we use smaller tools like trowels, brushes, dustpans to kind of scoop everything up. All the local leaders have been extremely supportive of us. La vostra presenza è sicuramente ben accolta e ben apprezzata dal paese e l'importanza della vostra presenza è questo progetto di poter rendere museale quest'area archeologica senza il vostro intervento rimaneva tutto sepolto sottoterra. Quindi il paese ma anche la regione Lazio ringrazia per la vostra opera. We work weekdays, five days a week and weekend students can go to Rome or somewhere else. Any Rutgers student can apply to participate in the field school. Global Education offers several scholarships and we've had a number of students take advantage of that. Some students are just looking for uh, an interesting study abroad experience and we sort of provide that for them. But I think students have a little bit of Indiana Jones in them. They, they want to experience that. They want to go out and get a hands-on experience of finding actual objects and contributing uh, to research and our knowledge of the past in, in sort of a direct way. It, it teaches students that some things are harder, some things are easier, but it just teaches you how to you know, adapt and flourish in a different kind of environment. That's a program out of Rutgers Newark. What a great experience, literally uncovering pieces of history. And speaking of history, the Rutgers University Glee Club has a long tradition of touring Europe every four years. Here's a look and a listen of their most recent trip to the Netherlands. From far and near we came to Rutgers. The Glee Club goes on a tour every fourth year. The student that sings in the Glee Club right away learns about the close connection between Utrecht um, and the Dutchman uh, who founded Rutgers University. Strengthening those ties through a concert in our 250th year was really exciting. I learned about the history that Rutgers has with uh, the University of Utrecht because Dr. Gardner had spoken about it uh, with us all year. He really placed an emphasis on it uh, because we were going to Utrecht and singing there. President Adamant, we uh, are so grateful for the friendship and support that your institution has given us for 250 years. This is actually the beginning of our celebration for our 250th anniversary and we're beginning it right here. Considering that uh, the Glee Club is uh, Rutgers' oldest student organization, it was really an honor to be able to perform in Utrecht because it's really a, an event of historic proportions for us to be a part Part of, and I really think that it was a very timely event for such a group. We actually rehearsed and performed a piece together with the students from the University of Utrecht. And what a great metaphor for the bringing together of our two communities, the founding of Rutgers University and the continuing history at the University of Utrecht. And just having our group and their group combine and sing, I thought it was amazing because, you know, music is the international language. They had a, a fantastic performance. Um, I summarized it as saying that uh, this was a performance which uh, was a, almost a trip around the world. Uh, they sang all kinds of songs from English to Welsh uh, to Scandinavian to even Indian, um, but also a small trip uh, in musical terms um, through history and throughout history. 33 years ago uh, was my first time outside the United States with the Glee Club. And uh, listening today to the, to the Glee Club, they sang the song Ave Maria, which was a song that we sang as well uh, so many years ago with Soup Walters, and it was just very emotional for me. Students themselves are more connected to the history of Rutgers University because of the nature of some of our songs, the college songs, and a lot of the events that we, uh, in which we participate. Uh, the history of Rutgers is, is right in front of us. Before we were in the Netherlands, uh, we started off in England singing in various cities there, and we went to Wales and sang in Bridgend, and then one week later we headed to the Netherlands. We sang in some of the most beautiful cathedrals I think I've ever seen or will ever be in my life. The best part of the tour for me was making incredible music in really, really beautiful spaces with my brothers in song. On the banks of the old The Rutgers University Glee Club has been around since 1872. And Glee Club director Dr. Patrick Gardner has continued their tradition of excellence. We've explored Rutgers' ties to Europe in the fields of research, education, and performance. But what about development? 
Here's Rutgers Around the World reporter and undergraduate Sienna Jones. Thanks, Gabriella. As you know, many of the countries in Eastern Europe were under communist rule for generations, but the end of the Cold War ushered in a new era of decentralization in the region, and Rutgers was there to help in a big way. Tonight, from West Berlin. Reporting tonight from Berlin. As decades of communist rule came to an end in Eastern Europe, the time was ripe for a sweeping political change. A local democracy in Poland came about because it was 1989. The political changes, political reforms began to happen. And very often in the situation of a democratic transition, majority of people focus on the national level. That means that very often um, the civil society, the citizens' participation, civic engagement is kind of ignored and forgot, and that's a mistake. Rutgers offered its expertise and resources to help countries like Poland build democratic institutions from the ground up. This included providing training to equip local governments with the tools to provide critical services to its citizens. LDP's role was really to engage citizens, uh, to engage local government officials, to provide them with skills, tools, knowledge, and expose them to different ways how the local democracy is done in different countries. So we connected Poland and United States. And over the years, the Local Democracy in Poland project has offered similar assistance to Belarus, Ukraine, Armenia, Georgia, and other countries in the region, and has made sure that everyone had equal access to the conversation. We're doing a lot of training for local government officials and for citizens. And we've noticed after a while that something is happening, that there's a gender imbalance. We began to create programs uh, specifically focused on women's political participation. These programs were extremely important because they created an environment for women to empower them. With 20 centers and over 1 million trainees, the organization continues its work even today, strengthening ties between Rutgers and the former Eastern Bloc countries. Rutgers has contributed tremendously to building that foundation for democracy in Poland. These kind of projects actually open up the institutions to talk to each other and uh, exchange ideas, people, and uh, create opportunities. Sienna, has the LDP taken its work beyond Poland? They have, Gabriella. The LDP is working in several other Eastern European countries, including Armenia and Belarus. Great to hear it's still going strong. Thank you, Sienna. As we move beyond Europe, let's bring in another one of our undergraduate reporters, Tara Reed. Thanks, Bruno. Rutgers University strives to give its students an informed understanding of the Middle East. Here are some of the ways Rutgers is doing exactly that. The Middle East continues to be one of the most dynamic regions in the world, and Rutgers has its finger on the pulse, with an enduring network of partnerships there. Right now we have 12 very active MOUs in the Middle East, four of which are in Israel and another eight in Arab countries in the neighboring region. These partnerships can bring about lab-based discoveries, like those from the Rutgers University Newark Al Quds University Brain Research Exchange. This exchange was begun as a way to build a collaborative presence with our Palestinian uh, students and faculty in the Palestinian territories in the West Bank. And it focuses on understanding brain function and brain disorders. And it was particularly motivated by the fact that depression is so high rate in the West Bank. So far, over the past five years, we have managed to help 4,000 patients and their families. We do locally relevant, internationally recognized research, and we help patients in order to ease the suffering of, of people back there in Palestine. And at other times, these collaborations take root in a virtual classroom. We did the integration of live sessions with virtual technology to train dietitians working for the Ministry of Health in Israel in physical assessment and physical exam. The findings from that were so outstanding that, again, we worked with Israel and with the Ministry of Health, as well as some hospitals in Israel and Tel Chai College to train dietetic educators. Rutgers students learn about the Middle East through their coursework. We offer a large range of language and literature courses at uh, MSL. Among those are languages such as Arabic, Persian, Turkish, and we've created a bunch of new content courses including a brand new course on women writers of the Middle East. And study abroad programs to the region. We've had Arabic language programs in Morocco, in Egypt and in Jordan, and we have programs in Turkey and in Israel as well. The Israeli programs are actually quite popular. 
Groups like the Center for Middle Eastern Studies and the Center for the Study of Genocide and Human Rights promote greater understanding about the Middle East throughout the university. The U.S. Mideast Dialogue Project is one that began uh, when we had a group of students from Syria come in 2007. And since then, one of the places we've worked with is Syria, but more broadly, given 9-11, the aftermath, the wars in Afghanistan, Iraq, and the conflict that's going on in the Middle East, it's really branched out. What we do is you know, research, but also outreach, education. Uh, we bring it in in our own teaching as well. Students and scholars come from all over the Middle East to Rutgers. We have an increasing number of Iranian scholars that are coming to Rutgers now. We have a number of students from Saudi Arabia, and we have a growing population coming from Turkey as well. Many of these international students and scholars share first-hand accounts about life back home, leading to greater awareness about the region. Right now we have an uh, IIE rescue scholar who is here from Syria, who is teaching jointly in our law school and business school, who not only is bringing his intellectual expertise here, but is also his, his very recent experience. The Newest Americans Project is a multimedia documentary project. One of the first um, videos is about a Syrian-American composer, his name is Malik Jandali. Malik composed a piece of music used in demonstrations by students against the Assad regime in Syria. Assad's thugs went to Homs, which is the town where he's from, and had his parents beat up and threatened to kill them. All my life I've lived in Saudi Arabia. The school I had is basically, here's the elementary school, here's the middle school and high school all together. So I've been like in one little world, and here it's like five campuses. It's a lot of stuff to take in. Tara, are there other ways that we're expanding ties into the Middle East? There are, Bruno. Rutgers is one of only 13 universities selected by the Institute of International Education, or IIE, to take part in one of the first study tours to Iran in the summer of 2015. As part of this delegation, Rutgers toured nine universities, like the University of Tehran, and found many potential avenues for collaboration. We just took a look at Rutgers' involvement in the Middle East, but we also have programs right here on campus that keep us connected to that part of the world. Joining us is Karen Small, Associate Director of the Allen and Joan Bildner Center for the Study of Jewish Life. Karen, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. What is the mission of the Bildner Center for the Study of Jewish Life? The Bildner Center was created to promote Jewish studies at Rutgers and to create a bridge between the university and the community. We bring visiting scholars to Rutgers uh, from around the world, often from Israel, who teach in our courses and also participate in our public programs. And we work closely with the Department of Jewish Studies, which offers a wide array of courses for students. And how do you connect with the community? We offer public lectures. Um, we have the Rutgers Jewish Film Festival, which is our largest and most visible event attended by community members. And we um, teach tre uh, teachers about the Holocaust. So one component of the Bildner Center is the Holocaust Resource Center. Mm -hmm. What exactly does that do? So the Holocaust Resource Center here at Rutgers um, is part of the state mandate to teach the Holocaust in the public schools. New Jersey is one of five states that has this mandate. And we bring in high school and middle school teachers um, for training on how to teach the Holocaust. It's a very complex subject. And it's not easy for teachers to decide what's appropriate in their classroom and how to teach to their students. So we work with them closely. We bring in scholars um, who are experts in this topic. And um, we, we really help build a support group amongst the teachers. Can you tell us about the free mini online courses? Oh, absolutely. And um, who can take them? Sure. This is an initiative that was started by a donor of ours who wanted to make Jewish studies courses available to people who couldn't come to campus. So together with the Department of Jewish Studies, we have created a series of mini courses Topics like um, the history of Zionism, Jews under Islam, rabbinic literature, they're available online through our website. You can just sign up, log in, and take the courses. And are and those available to everyone? Anybody can take the course. And we actually have people from around the world who log onto these courses. Thank you very much, Karen, for being with us today. Thank you. That concludes this episode of our program. Please join us next time for another look at Rutgers Around the World, where we'll explore relationships in Latin America and the Caribbean. I'm Bruno Ferreira. And I'm Gabriela Millian. Thanks for watching.